Today's second grade math lesson focuses on very special problems. Sometimes we might have a problem with not enough information. It might have extra information that we don't need, or it might have hidden information. Let's take a look at what some of these problems look like and decide how we can solve them. Let's take a look at the first problem. Katie makes an apple pie. She uses five apples. How many apples does she have left? Wait a minute. That doesn't sound right. Look at the problem. There's only one number in my problem. How can I solve a problem with only one number? Let's read it one more time. Katie makes an apple pie. She uses five apples. How many apples does she have left? Now, if she's using apples, I think I'm going to be subtracting those five apples, and I need to know how many she has left. But what about the number up here? What do you think that number should represent? What do we need to know for this problem? We need to know how many does she start with? If we do not have a starting number, how are we going to subtract? So if I have a problem like this, I am going to need to add some information because there is not enough. What if we say she started with, how about, let's say, eight apples? And of course, if you're doing this by yourself, you can pick your own number, but I'm going to pick eight apples. Now, since we know how many she started with, now we are able to solve the problem to see how many she has left. Without the starting number, we do not have enough information to solve this problem. I'm going to count down and use my touch points. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. That means that Katie has three apples left. In this problem, we had to add some of our own information in order to solve it. Let's take a look at another example of a problem that does not have enough information. Mrs. Lunds is making a necklace with red and green beads. So I have two different color beads. Nine beads are red. How many beads are green? Hmm, since I have two colors, red and green, I think I'm going to put my numbers on a math mountain. Now let's see what we know. I only have one number here. I know I have red beads and green beads. Now the problem says that I have nine beads that are red. So I'm going to put a nine on this side. The question is, how many beads are green? That is my missing number. So if I look at my math mountain, my missing piece is my total. I don't know how many total beads she has. So we get to make up our own information again, second grade. How about let's say she has 14 beads. Since this is all of her beads, I know that it is the total. So I'm going to add my made up number 14. It's the king of the mountain. Now I can either count up or count down to find my missing number. I'm going to count up for this problem. Nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So she has nine red beads and five green beads. Now, normally I would just write beads, but since we have two different color beads, I decided to write green beads so I can be more specific. Just like the last problem, this one did not have enough information and we had to add our own starting number. Some problems are going to have too much information. We don't need everything that they give us. Let's read the first problem. Marty has seven red toy cars, eight blue toy cars, and four yellow toy cars. How many red and yellow toy cars does he have? Now let's see, we have three numbers here, and my first thought is to go like this. We know how to add three add-ins. Of course we do, we already practiced that. But let's look very carefully at my question. How many red and yellow toy cars does he have? That means that I only need the numbers for the red cars and the yellow cars. Let's look up at the top. Here's red, blue, and yellow. So that means I don't need this piece of information. I can just cross it off with my pencil. I only need the red and the yellow. Now I'm, I have red and yellow. That means I'm looking for them together. So seven plus four. I'm going to use my touch points to add seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That means he has 11 toy cars. Now these problems are a little bit easier to spot than some others because if I am a good reading detective and I look very closely at the question, I can see which colors I need and which ones I do not. Sometimes they try to trick us, but we have to be great readers. Let's try another problem. Frank has eight quarters and nine pennies. He also has 12 nickels. How many nickels and pennies does Frank have? Hmm, this one is sort of like the last one. I have three numbers. Let me double check in my question. Here's my question to see if I need all of it. How many nickels and pennies does Frank have? So I only need nickels and pennies. That means I can get rid of my quarters because I don't need that number. I have 12 nickels and nine pennies. Let's see what that gives me. I'm going to use my touch points. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21, hmm, what could I call nickels and pennies? I wonder if there's a word I could use so I don't have to write those long words out. Could I call them coins? I think I can because nickels and pennies are both a type of coin. So I didn't need my quarters in this problem. The last type of special problem for today has what we call hidden information. It's not that it's hiding from us, but we might miss it if we read our problem too quickly. Let's see what it says. Our class has 15 students and a set of twins. How many students are in our class? Now, when I'm looking at the problem, I only see one number. That's it. 
So if I'm asking how many students are in our class, isn't my answer right here 15 students? No, it's not because there is hidden information. Did you spot the hidden information that I spotted? There are 15 students, but it also says there is a set of twins. How many students would be in a set of twins, second grade? Do you know how many in, are in twins? Twins are two students. So not only do I have 15, I also have my set of twins. And now I can find my total number, 15, 16, 17. That means that my class has 17 students, not just 15 like they tried to trick us with. They hid the part about the twins. That is our hidden information. Here is our last problem for today's lesson. This one also has some hidden information. See if you can spot where they hid it. I went to the store and bought a dozen chocolate donuts. I also bought four sprinkle donuts. How many donuts did I buy? Hmm, this one is tricky. I see that I have two different types of donuts. I have chocolate donuts and I have sprinkle donuts, but I only have one number. I'm wondering where my hidden word is. Let's read that first sentence about chocolate donuts again. I went to the store and bought a dozen chocolate donuts. Have you ever heard of that word before, a dozen? We often buy cupcakes in a dozen or donuts in a dozen. A dozen means 12. So if I ever go to the bakery or the store and I buy a dozen of something, it means I'm buying 12. That is where my other number comes from. So I have 12 chocolate donuts and four sprinkle donuts. Now I can find my total number of donuts. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That means that I bought 16 donuts at the store. Don't be fooled by that hidden information. They might try to trick us and only give us one number, but if we are careful readers, we will be able to find the missing number that we need.